Welcome to another edition of First in the West. I'm Staff Sergeant Tiger Foster. Today, the training machine highlights two notable events. The first, a recent award ceremony honoring a soldier for his service and defense of his country. And the second event focuses on a recent Division West run, which will showcase a little bit of Division West esprit de corps. All that's coming up right here with First in the West. Awards presentations are a distinct part of Army culture, but not all presentations are alike. In a ceremony in Gatesville, Texas, Private First Class James W. Rhodes was honored posthumously for his actions that took place in the Second World War. Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy reports. The ceremony was dignified as the awards were respectfully presented. In this case, both the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart were received by the daughters of Private First Class James W. Rhodes who passed away in 1999. Those attending this April morning gathering in Gatesville, Texas, were here to posthumously honor Rhodes for the way he served his country during World War II. The reason it's important for us in uniform today to recognize soldiers like PFC Rhodes is because he is our legacy. We can be really respected in uniform because of his acts and those many of who did not return from combat did for our, our soldiers and our lives and our families. The legacy that we just saw transferred here today was by the great efforts of you to keep his memory and his service alive. And for those of you who get the opportunity when you go inside the building there and see the display, his uniform on display, and the pictures, you're gonna see a great American hero. Somebody who took pride in not only his service, but also as a person to this nation. James W. Rhodes enlisted in the United States Army in 1942. He saw action on Omaha Beach during the D-Day invasion. Months later, he was wounded near Metz, France, and was later discharged in 1945. In this battle where they freed the town of Metz, and 6,500 soldiers died in that fight. Now we think about that, 6,500 soldiers died in a fight. I don't know how long that fight last, lasted. According to the paper I read, they had 100 straight days of combat. The citizens of Gatesville, a U.S. representative, and Division West soldiers were among those who came together to show their support. Yet key family members and friends played a pivotal role. I don't think he would have expected anything of this. He would not have pursued this. Uh, he's, he was a very humble man, very humble. Right. And it would have been a really big honor for him, again, to be among all of you. Mm -hmm. You know, our military deserves, you know, ab above and beyond anything we could ever honor them with. So this is really cool for them to honor the family and honor him in this way. It's a really neat deal. We had a lot of family here. There was a lot of friends and military also that, that I know that my granddad meant a lot to them, and uh, so I was proud that you know everybody showed up the way they did, and really proud of the way the military turned out. That very special. It makes me feel very proud, and I'm very honored that um, that this is taking place, and I'm, I'm I'm very proud for him. For Division West soldiers, the opportunity to take part in honoring such a soldier was also deeply felt. Almost all of them are combat veterans themselves with uh, multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. So they understand the importance of being prepared to go into combat. So being able to recognize a veteran from World War II, it really brings home what they do for a living every day. The important job of preparing those reserve formations to go and succeed in combat and come home just like PFC Rhodes did in 1945. Reporting from Gatesville, Texas, I'm Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy with First in the West. A Division West run took place just right here the other morning. It involved key First Army and Division West leaders, great weather, and an uplifting message to the troops. And oh, did I forget? Division West soldiers. Uh, 
better than a nice cool breeze, nice warm temperature, getting out of the winter PT outfit and getting into t-shirt and shorts, which uh, is the way it should be here in Texas, right? Yeah, and it ain't that way at Rock Island. <laughs> what I routinely highlight to a lot of people is one of the unique things about First Army is uh, we are by design a uh, tremendously strong multi-component formation. Uh, we have been and we will stay that way. That is the strength of uh, who we are and what we do. The importance of First Army and what we do, sustaining the readiness of our reserve component partners to include assisting the active component where needed uh, will absolutely have a place in the future. You know, in our formation, you know, all we do is train. You know, we train those heading to the war fight, but we train those to ensure that the readiness of their organization is sustained for the future. And that's always going to be a requirement. That wraps up this segment of First in the West. We'll get with you next time.